We have now come to the end of the continuous state variable part of the module. In this video, I want to look back on what we have learned, give you some guidelines for the design of a state variable compensator, evaluate state variable control, and discuss how you would go about implementing a state variable compensator in practice. We began this module by describing the dynamics of the plant as a state variable model. We then went on to analyze the dynamics of the plant in several ways. Lastly, we looked at designing a state variable compensator and we considered two possible structures, one with reference feed forward and the other with integral control. The observer, which estimates the plant states, and the state feedback, which determines the closed loop poles, are the same between the two structures. Only the way the reference input is incorporated differs. For the compensator design, we have to first choose the structure of the compensator and then specify the desired closed loop and observer poles. The compensator parameters are then directly obtained from these desired poles. The difficult decisions in state variable compensator design are where to place the desired closed loop and observer poles. I therefore want to give you a few guidelines you can use to approach these choices. Before we discuss the guidelines, I want to stress that they should not be taken as the only possible approach, but rather as a simple starting point for the compensator design. They might also not be applicable to certain types of plants. We usually start with the desired transient response of the closed loop system. From the transient response parameters, such as overshoot, settling time, rise time or peak time, we can specify the two dominant closed loop poles. We then place the remainder of the closed loop poles such that they are faster than the dominant poles and would not have a significant effect on the transient response. However, we do not want to move the closed loop poles further than necessary from the open loop locations since we want to minimize the control effort to prevent the plant input from saturating. Once we have placed the closed loop poles, we place the observer poles such that they are faster than the dominant closed loop poles and therefore do not significantly affect the transient response. A good rule of thumb is to make the observer poles two to six times faster than the dominant closed loop poles. Since the observer signals do not saturate, it might appear that we could make the observer poles much faster than this guideline, which would make the observer error decay very quickly. However, very fast observer dynamics require very high observer gains, which will make this observer very sensitive to sensor noise and could make the state estimates less accurate than otherwise. Once the closed loop and observer poles have been chosen, we can calculate the compensator gains and construct the compensator. The usual process is then to apply the design compensator to an ideal linear simulation of the plant and evaluate the closed loop response and control effort. If there is a more realistic plant simulation available, one then applies and evaluates the compensator on it and lastly, one applies and evaluates the compensator on the actual plant. If at any stage the system behavior is not satisfactory, you need to revisit your compensator design and go through this evaluation process again. It is usually necessary to do several design iterations to get an acceptable closed loop response for the actual plant. If the closed loop response is not satisfactory, then you might wonder how to go about changing the desired pole locations. My quick advice is to understand the dynamics of the system and to try to isolate the cause of bad performance and then to use this understanding to incrementally change the pole locations until you get the desired response. However, for a complex system, this might be very challenging to do. Intuitive understanding of the techniques and experience will go a long way in helping you. Also take note that there are more sophisticated methods available to help you design the compensator, so think of the techniques covered in this module as the starting point for mastering state variable control. Let's now look back on state variable control and briefly discuss its advantages and disadvantages. On the upside, we have seen that if the plant is controllable and observable, if the plant model is accurate, and if actuator saturation is not a problem, then we can place the closed loop and observer poles anywhere. If the desired pole locations are given, then it is a straightforward process to design the compensator. 
It could therefore be very easy to design an acceptable compensator. It is also quite easy to extend the state variable techniques to plants with multiple inputs and multiple outputs, which are found in many real-world plants. On the downside, it is often difficult to decide where to place the closed loop and observer poles, and it is often difficult to know how to change the desired pole locations if the system behavior is not satisfactory. Another disadvantage is that a state variable compensator is often more dependent on an accurate plant model than a classical controller, and the actual response might differ significantly or completely fail to work if the plant model is inaccurate. One can therefore think of state variable control as a powerful approach for control system design, but it is not necessarily the best approach for all cases. For each case, one should understand the requirements and plant dynamics and then carefully choose between the classical and state variable approaches. Lastly, let's look at the concepts you still need to master before you can apply state variable control techniques in practice. If we look at the compensator structures we have considered for this module, then we can see that they are defined in the continuous time domain. To implement such compensators, we essentially have to build the structure using continuous time integrators, summations and gains. We could, in principle, build it as an analog electronic circuit using components such as operational amplifiers, resistors, capacitors and inductors. However, this will take a lot of effort to build and would be very difficult to adapt. Almost all control systems today are implemented in digital processes, but they can only implement discrete time systems. It is much easier to implement and adapt a control system in a digital processor, but it is then necessary to extend the continuous time state variable techniques to the discrete time domain. Luckily, this extension is quite easy to do and is one of the topics of the control systems module that follows this one. Apart from the extension of state variable techniques to the discrete time domain, as well as the extension to plants with multiple inputs and multiple outputs, you now have the necessary skills to design a state variable compensator for many practical plants.